Hello, incredible listeners. It's Sharice here, your host at Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. I'm thrilled to have you with us for another inspiring episode. Today, I have an exciting opportunity to share with businesses, brands, and fellow podcast enthusiasts out there. Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast has become a hub for positive conversation, personal growth, and inspiring stories. Our listeners are engaged, passionate, and eager to discover new products and services that align with their values. And now, we're opening up the doors for advertising partnerships. If you have a product, service, or message that resonates with our audience, we love to feature it on our podcast. Why advertise with us? Well, you'll get exposure to a diverse and dedicated audience. Your brand showcased in a positive and uplifting environment and the chance to be part of a community that believes in making a difference. We offer various advertising packages to suit your needs, from sponsorship segments to product placements and everything in between. It's a fantastic way to connect with our, our listeners and let them know about what you have to offer. If you're interested in advertising on Sharif Johnson Moore's podcast and being a part of a space that values authenticity and positivity, reach out to us at snjm at sharicenjohnsonmore.com and let's discuss how we can collaborate and create something amazing together. I'm genuinely excited about the possibilities of featuring your brand on our podcast. Together, let's inspire, uplift, and make every episode an incredible experience for our listeners. Thank you for considering Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast for your advertising needs. I can't wait to hear from you and share your story with our wonderful community. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daily Devotional. Today, we are in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 15, 1 through 29. And in this chapter, it recounts the solemn and joyous occasion when King David, with great reverence and celebration, brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. In this chapter, David assembles the Levites and priests to orchestrate the proper worship and musical accompaniment for this sacred event. The narrative highlights the importance of following God's instructions and in carrying out religious ceremonies, underscoring the significance of reverence and obedience in matters of faith. So, come on everybody, let's deep dive into our word of the day on Daily Devotional. Come on now, let's get busy. First Chronicles chapter 15, 1 through 29. And it reads, And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, for them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God, and to minister unto him forever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of God unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron 
and the Levites. Of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Merari, Isaiah Ais- the chief, and his brethren, two hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and thirty. Of the sons of Elizaphet, Shimeah the chief, and his brethren, two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliud the chief, and his brethren, four score. Of the sons of Uziel, Amenadab the chief, and his brethren, a hundred and twelve. And David called for Zadok and Abithia the priest, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Joel, Shimea, and Eliel, and Amenadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses, com- Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spoke to the chief of the Levites, to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, palmistry, and harps, and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren Asaph, the son of Berachiel, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan the son of Cushion, Cushia, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, being Jeziel, and Shemir, Miramoth, and Jehiel, and Una, Eliab, and ben- Beniah, and Manasseh, and Mattathiah, Mattathiah, and Ilphiel, and Meek, Niah, and Obinadom, and Jeel, the porters. So the singers, Heman, Asaph, Ethan, were appointed in sound with cymbals of brass. And Zechariah and Aziel and Shimmermoth and Jehiel and Unai and Eliab and Messiah and Benanai were palmistries on El Alamoth and Mat Mattathiah and Elifia and Me- Meek Naya, and Obinadom, and Jael, and Aziah, with harps on the Sheminoth to excel, and Ches- Chehaniah, chief of the Levites, was for song. He instructed about the song because he was skillful, and Berachiel, and Elkanah were doorkeepers of the for the ark. And Shebaniah and Jehoshaphat and Nathaniel and Amasiah and Zechariah 
and Benana and Elzir, the priests, did blow with the trumpets before the ark of God, and Abinadam and Jehiel were doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Abinadab, Abin, uh, Abedadam, with joy. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bear the ark the, and the singers and Chenanai, the master of the song with the singers, David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with sound of the cornet and with trumpets and with cymbals, making a noise with palmistries and harps. And it came to pass, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michelle, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a looking out at a window, saw King David dancing, and she despised him in her heart. I have just read First Chronicles chapter fifteen, one through. 29. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you, Lord. We come to you to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to have the breath in our bodies and activity of our limbs, and we are in our right minds just for today, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to read your word, allowing us to understand your word, and allowing us to do, be doers of your word, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, and and may you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. assumption he wanted to move the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem but that was not successful because he did not discuss did not ask didn't consider God's feelings about the matter and took it on upon himself to do something that God didn't ask him to do so the second time around we see that he is uh, decided to consult God with what he needs to do when it comes to concert concerning when it comes to fighting the Philistines, okay? So he got God's answer for that. He got God's permission for that. And now he wants to go and move the Ark of the Covenant into uh, its own place and move it to Jerusalem. So when he moves it to Jerusalem, this time he... uh, does it in decent and in order. And an indecent and in order means that everything is supposed to be done a certain way. And that means being respectful in the way ceremonies, programs, way things are supposed to be set up for the church. This time it's the Ark of the Covenant and he's creating a place for it to rest in Jerusalem which he goes back and he's doing it the way Moses did it with the Ark of the Covenant. 
And when you do things in decent and in order, God is very pleased. God is pleased with your work. When you have taken respect and put respect on it, respect, you know, and it means that you don't want to offend anybody. You are considerate of God's feelings. You are considerate of the way things are done. And you ask for permission. And you want to put it in order. In the way God had it planned out to be. So he gathered the Levites and the priests that are in charge of the Ark of the Covenant. If you recall, they were in charge in Moses' Moses's time. And Aaron was their head priest, head Levite at the time. So, in this instance, he takes a page out of Moses' pages of things being done in decent and order. And with that being said... you know God didn't call you to do that you know God didn't tell you to do that and you did it anyway and it ended up being not successful or you know and you just went on a whim just threw it out there and did whatever you wanted to do and thought it was going to be successful regardless of if that is a life a life matter or a career or a business? Have you have you just went on ahead and said, I'm going to just do this anyway. And I'm going to make the best out of it. And I don't care who don't like it. And, and it's my business. And it's none the other. And then you realize you have left out a, a key equation. A, a key equation, which is God. When we leave God out of our order in our lives, our lives become chaotic. <clears throat> when it is not done in decent and in order, it is chaotic. It has no, it has no order. It has no, no, no structure. It has no um, plan. It has no plan. And when we live like that, we be wondering why stuff be happening to us <clears throat> because. We didn't ask God first. Should we do that? We didn't ask God first and we didn't put a plan together of what was supposed to go in order of how things were supposed to be structured or how things are supposed to be done in this step, step at one, step two, step three, step four, step five. We didn't ask or we didn't consult anyone in that realm of what we were doing of how to do it and how to accomplish it in a manner where it will be successful. Whether we have mentors, whether we we decided to go get us coaches, or have we have we decided to uh, read the books, uh, you know, and you know, um, or start our own church. No. Um, this, this is a thing that reminds me of when a person starts their own church. Have you, you know, what have you, have you gone and sat down with somebody that has done this before, you know, has done this um, successfully, has accomplished that goal <clears throat> of starting their own church or starting your own business or or moving into another phase of your life where you're leaving old stuff behind and and you don't know, you know, who to contact, who to consult, and, you know, and like I, you know, I give you, I give you my example. My example of when I first started my business, um, I said, I, I'll say that no, I didn't know what I was doing. 
I didn't know a lick of beans. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing, okay? And because I didn't know anything or consult with anybody, or um, when I did seek out the advice from someone, I got a, you know, I got a lot of negativity from it. <clears throat> when I went to consult, speak, sit down, talk to people, and they, they acted like they didn't want to give me the information. Okay, sometimes you can run into that. But when you consult God with everything, God gives you answers, but you have to have patience and wait for an answer when he gives it to you. And yes, you may hear from God to do something, but are you consulting God in what to do next? You know, and are you reading the books? Are you taking classes? Are you taking... Uh, things that would increase your knowledge of the thing that you are trying to pursue. And in this instance, David wants to have God as the center of what he does. He wants to have the Levites in their own place, in their own worship center. Uh, he wants to have God there with him in his in, in in his place of residency and he wants to make it where the children of Israel have access to God and they want everyone to go he wants everyone to go back to the way things was when Moses was in place where certain people were in charge of certain activities. You see, he's got his psalmists, he got the, the, the singers, he got, you know, the, 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 the um, musicians in place, and everyone has their assignments, and he does, he puts everything in order, and in decent and in order, in order to have the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem, where everyone is with for the children of Israel and sometimes when we start things we gotta learn how to put the right people in the right positions you have to put the right people in the positions um so you know you have so there won't be any confusion like it's like building a team It's like building a team for your business or your life. Okay, who's going to be the main person that I can consult when it comes to these matters? Who's the person that's going to do this? Uh, Who's going who I can consult or leave in charge to do these matters? Who's going to be in charge of this? He's put everything in order when it comes to um, having a place where the Ark of the Covenant shall reside okay and he is he is greatly 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 happy about it so much so that he goes into total praise he goes into total praise that things are working out the way God asked him to do this matter and and things are, are are successful this time and he's happy and they're praising and they they've gotten that all the children of Israel have gathered and they've done the ceremonies and they've done everything in decent and in order and David goes in the total praise in the streets and in the, in front of the tabernacle you know the pl- the place where the ark of covenant shall reside. And he's dancing, and he's praising, and he, you know, getting his groove on, you know. And the daughter of Saul sees him dancing and praising the Lord with the children of Israel, and she is not happy. She is not happy that he is that she's not happy with what she sees him doing. And you, in life, in life, in life, in life, just like in the scripture, you're going to always have someone 
that is not happy with what you are doing. They are always going to find fault in what you're doing. I read uh, 1529, and it says, And it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, Michelle, 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 the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. She didn't want him doing all that, because she didn't, she despised him because he had to know her father's dead father's dead, you know, and he was killed in the last, in the battle. And, you know, it's, it's a thing of, <sighs> some people have got it in their mind that they gonna hate you because of something you might have did in your past to them. And they're going to despise you because of something that you did that affected them. Regardless of how the situation may be, how it may look, the person is going, you know, that's what they always say. Uh, Be careful how you treat people. Because how you treat people, it will come back on you. You know, you're going to see it later. You're going to see it later. And we're not going to get into that. We're going to leave that for another time. But she despises him. Michelle despises King David. And he is jubilant. He's happy. He is doing things right. And and people will look at you in a certain way. And they are going to despise you for your happiness. They're going to despise you because you are happy and you're content and you're joyous and you're, you're doing everything right. And you're doing everything right in your life. And they're mad because they remember you when you were someone else. Or because you have moved on with your life and you are happy and living joyously. And you are proud and you are accomplishing a lot of things and stuff. And some people would just, they, from your past, they will look at you then. They look at you then, what happened. And then when they look at you in another form... And when they look at you in another form, they will have grievances against you from past actions you might have done to them. But I, you know, but I'm going to leave this on a joyous note of be happy in your new season that God has blessed you with new things, new activities, new insight, new visions. Be happy in that place because you are not there by accident. God has placed you there for a reason. God has placed you there for a reason and a season. And don't be scared to be joyous. Don't be scared that you live in a new life. Don't be scared that, that God has placed you somewhere that you are, are you are better now. You are better in this place than you was like way back then. God has brought you to a new level. So, with that being said, when you have new levels, you got new devils. So, you know, be prepared. Be be prepared. And I say, be happy. Be happy in your new on your new level, your new life, your new venture, your new 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 new, you know, you know that new thing. And don't let anybody take your joy away. Okay? I love you all, and I greatly appreciate you listening to Daily Devotional for today, and this concludes our session for today. And um, when you do things in decent and in order, God blesses you. 
All right. I love you all, and I want you all to have a blessed day. Okay, babies? All right. Talk to you next time on Daily Devotional. Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 beautiful souls. It's Sharice Johnson Moore here, your host of Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast, along with other uh, different shows that we have on this podcast, such as Daily Devotional, Morning Word and Worship, Let's Talk Sunday, Entrepreneurial Corners, and Authors Excerpt Sunday. Today, I'm reaching out to our incredible listeners for an opportunity that's close to my heart. Producing this podcast is a labor of love, and I'm truly grateful for the support you've shown so far. As we continue to grow and evolve, I'm excited to invite you to be an even more integral part of this journey. Your contributions can play a vital role in helping us maintain the quality of content you love. If you've ever thought about supporting Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast, now's the perfect time. We've made it simple. If you enjoy our podcast and would like to contribute, you can do so through our PayPal link in the description box. Your donation, no matter how small, goes directly towards the production and improvement of our episodes. You can go to PayPal dot me backslash s n j m o o r e paypal dot me backslash s n j m o o r e to make your donations simply just give and and you will be making a contribution that is it quick and easy every donation makes a significant difference I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you. Your support means more than words can convey. I'm honored to have you as part of our podcast family. If you're unable to contribute financially at this time, your support is still invaluable. You can help by sharing our podcast with your friends, family, and on social media. Every bit counts. Thank you for your considerate consideration of supporting Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Your generosity allows us to continue creating content that uplifts and inspires. Here's to more episodes filled with positivity and growth. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And everyone have a blessed day. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I want to say thank you for listening to the podcast for this morning of Daily Devotional. I pray that you have a very blessed day. And remember that God loves you. He cherishes you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? And I love you. And I will talk to you again tomorrow for our meetup for Daily Devotional. All right now, go out and conquer the day. With God on your side, all things are possible. Okay? All right. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye, babies.